Tennessee Titans fans, we meet once more, and today we are listening to Tom Pelisario on the Rich Eisen Show give his non-negotiables for each AFC South team. I don't even know what that means. This is, I guess this would be like the things that each of these four teams must do, I guess. Non-negotiable, you have to do this this year. I don't really know what to expect from this because I really don't even understand what this means, but... Uh, let's just see. We've been rolling through some of the non-negotiables for every NFL division. Let's tackle the AFC South right now, shall we? Non-negotiable. All right. Let's uh, let's talk about the Houston Texans. They are the first full squad team in training camp. They were out there early this morning beating that blazing Houston Heat, seeing what they can do in year two. I would say the non-negotiable for the Texans is keep the peace. You've had a lot of success last year with a group that was at least somewhat anonymous. You had the... So I guess it's if you're going to be successful, this is the thing that you must do. Uh, and obviously, Houston is the team. Everybody's picking to win the division, so let's continue. You know, the Nico Collins of the world making a lot of plays for you. You had a defense that was... You know, there were a lot of veterans on that defense that they had added, but they weren't high-profile types of additions. This year, among the additional models you've got to feed are Joe Mixon who's never been a, in a locker room issue, but you've added Joe Mixon. You've added Stefan Diggs. You still have That's Nico Collins. You've got Tank Dale. You've got Dalton Schultz. you got a lot of a lot of mouths to feed on that team. I see what he's saying. I think the main one to talk about here is Stefan Diggs. I mean, because he's the one, if we've ever seen somebody with Minnesota and then with Buffalo, if we've ever seen somebody get unhappy because they didn't feel like they were getting enough targets or they were getting enough production... I mean, let's be honest. I'm not just saying it because it's Houston. Stephon Diggs, the new addition to this team, that's the guy who has caused trouble at all, anywhere. The good thing for Houston is, even when he has caused trouble, he has continued to be productive. So, And with a guy like Diggs, who I've, I've covered his entire career, he's a good dude, he's a fun guy to talk to, he's a hell of a player. He also wants the football. Yeah. And so this isn't a matter of you got to force the ball to Stephon Diggs. What I'm saying is they've got to figure out ways to make sure that everybody keeps pulling the same direction on this team because you've got some heavy workload type of guys who may not have quite the same role that they have in the past. And any time that you integrate a ball-dominant wide receiver into a team that had a really strong passing game, there's always some different dynamics at play. I'm not anticipating problems there. If anybody can handle it, it's D'Amico Ryans and C.J. Stroud because from every post-game video I see, they really seem to run that locker room. I I would say my non-negotiable for Houston would be avoid the sophomore slump because last year was like a fairy tale almost like nobody thought Houston was going to be anything and then CJ Stroud and D'Amico Ryans were so great in their first years that they ended up winning the division they ended up winning a playoff game and now a lot of people are hyped up about them going into this year I mean people are talking about them being the biggest threat to the Chiefs People are talking about Super Bowl aspirations, and they should. I mean, this is their Super Bowl window. But it I've said it on here in the past, and maybe it's the Titans fan in me. It's just setting up for some type of disaster. I mean, everybody's expecting C.J. Stroud to continue to build on his great rookie year. There, Stephon Diggs. I mean, we've already seen now Danico Autry has a six-game suspension. That was a huge addition to their defense that they're not going to have for six games now. Um, you know, it just, it, it's one of those what could possibly go wrong type things. And whenever they say that in movies, something goes wrong. But that's the biggest key. Keep the peace. For the Colts, pretty simple. Anthony Richardson needs to play smarter. He's got to, as Dwight Freeney said on the Insiders on NFL Network a couple days ago, he's just got to get down sometimes. He can't take the hits that he did last year. I don't care how big you are. He's 6'5". I believe he said earlier this offseason, he's now up to like 245 or 250. Ooh. One of the biggest humans we've ever seen wow. play NFL quarterback. Still can't get hit like he did last year. Four starts, knocked out of three of them. Got to have more to it. 
Got to be able to get on the field because when he has been out there, they've seen flashes of why they drafted that guy as high as they did. Because um, I agree. Yes, he's got a. You can't be effective on the sideline. He's clearly if I, if I'm taking my Titans fan hat off and just being honest, yes, you've got to take better care of yourself. And the same can be said for Will Levis too. You got to take care of yourself. Can't be taking ridiculous hits. I would argue, though, that you also have to acknowledge that some of the hits that Anthony Richardson took that put him out of games were not vicious hits. I mean, let's look at the tackle in the Titans game that ended his season. It's a pretty routine tackle. I mean, it wasn't like somebody came up and just clobbered him. Are we talking about a guy who needs to take better care of himself or are we talking about a guy who's just injury prone anyway? And even the most basic of tackles or hits could be a problem. I don't know. I mean, it's football. You're going to get hit is what I'm saying. The other thing I would say is I still don't agree with this idea that, oh, if Anthony Richardson can just stay healthy, they're going to be great. We've seen so little of this kid. I'm not here to say that he sucks. I'm just here to say, how could you possibly tell either way? We've seen so little of him in actual, meaningful, real, live NFL action that this assumption that like, well, if Anthony Richardson's healthy, he's great. Based on what? And if you're going to say that what we did see of him shows promise... How could you not make the same argument for Will Levis? It's what I've been saying. I know. Let me put my Titans fan hat back on. If we're going to give Anthony Richardson the benefit of the doubt, why not give Will Levis any semblance of it either? There are bigger humans hitting him. Correct. He's the biggest quarterback. We've seen a long list of big guys at quarterback. Cam Newton being a principal uh, example. Cam Newton's the biggest quarterback. Who eventually it seen. adds up over the course of time. And some yeah, of that too. I mean, yeah. Shane Steichen, Jim Bob Cooter, they got to... Adds up over the course of time. Added up for Richardson immediately. Uh, they got to scheme things uh, maybe a little bit differently than they did a year ago. But you can't <laughs> take Cooter. away the threat. You just want to call him JB? <laughs> That'd be Te- better. Technically, Dan McGuire was the biggest quarterback, right? At 6'8 back in the day. But that's my guy wearing the RKO NWO style shirt. History lesson. Tall. I mean, Brock Osweiler yeah. was like 6'9. He was 6'9? Okay. He, six, look it up. Yeah, he was 6'8, 6'9. He's, six, eight, six, nine. he's, he's a big still, guy. That's a name but I he had like my, my body shape. Just like you stretched me out like Gumba, Gumby. Uh, Jaguars, non negotiable. Get Trevor Lawrence in rhythm. We've seen Trevor Lawrence play really good football. We've seen him play not really good football. And down the stretch last season, it was not a Trevor Lawrence issue. It was the whole Jaguars team. But they were not the same. He's not making $55 million a year. He's being paid like one of the best quarterbacks in the NFL. Yep. I don't think there's a whole lot of people out there right now, just to be completely honest. If you're making a list of the top five quarterbacks in the NFL, I don't think Trevor Lawrence is on it no. for very many no. people. Top five? I don't know how many no. people he's on a top ten quarterback list and that's because of the inconsistencies they got to find a way to keep him being the same guy all the time spot on i thought that was spot on yes uh when trevor lawrence gets in a rhythm he plays well uh the end of the 2022 season when they got on that win streak and momentum started rolling he played really well he was playing really well at the start of last year got hurt things got out of rhythm he folded. So. And then for the Titans, there's a lot of different ways that this could go. We know that they made a lot of additions. We know they were active in free agency. They got to figure out, is Will Levis the guy? Those are all important things. I'm going to say it's find a run game. I'm going to say, we well, you know you got Levis, and he's got a cannon of an arm, and he's a tightly wound dude, and he's going to he's gonna put... Somewhere Mike Vrabel just lit up and smiled when he said that. The Titans have to find a run game. Let me rewind a little bit. No, you got Levis, and he's got a cannon of an arm, and he's a tightly wound dude, and he's going to he's gonna put in every bit of effort you could possibly get out of him. Yeah. And I've talked with Brian Callahan. We've had him on the Insiders, too, and he, I know that he's he's excited about the possibilities with Levis. He signed Calvin Ridley. He signed Tyler Boyd. you still got DeAndre Hopkins. But how are you going to run the football and keep all the pressure 
from being on him. They signed Tony Pollard. They got Tajay Spears. Okay, they still got Hassan Haskins and Julius Chestnut and those guys, but... I mean, this guy's digging deep. He's bringing up names like Hassan Haskins and Julius Chestnut. (laughs) Has there ever been another mainstream sports media show to utter the name Julius Chestnut? (laughs) What? Um... To some degree, I see what he's saying. I would say the non-negotiable is you, you've you got to see what you've got in Will Levis. And I know Titans fans are tired of hearing that. Uh, that. But it is a very unique perspective from this guy to say, we know Will Levis is going to do his thing. We know the pass game's there. So we got to establish the run. That's a unique perspective to take. I actually feel pretty good. I know people are saying, oh, they lost Derrick Henry. The run game's going to look different than it has in five or six years for the Titans. But I'm like, I was surprised at the Tony Pollard signing and how quickly it happened. But I like Pollard. I like that addition. I like how he compliments Spears. I like, I mean, unless we forget, I know last season was not exactly great for Tony Pollard. Dealt with injuries in Dallas. Didn't have the year he expected. But the year prior to that, I mean, this guy was good enough that they were willing to get rid of Ezekiel Elliott. Like, he stole the running back position from Ezekiel Elliott in Dallas. So, I don't exactly think we've just got a bum in Tony Pollard that's going to come in here and just, you know, whatever. He's going to come in here and be 1A, 1B with Tajay Spears. And Tajay Spears was in a clear number two role to Derek last season. And he still showed signs. Did some really nice things. There's a lot to be excited about there. So maybe I'm jinxing myself. I'm not particularly worried about how are we going to run the ball. I think, yes, it's not going to be Derek Henry. It's not going to be 30 times a game. It's not going to be ground and pound you know, for 60 minutes, thank God. It's going to look different, but I think for what they're going to need, and especially when you think of what Pollard and Spears bring to the pass game, I'm not particular. I hope I, this doesn't come back to bite me. I'm not particularly worried about the run game. I'm not. I think Pollard and Spears combined, it's not going to be Derrick Henry. It's not going to be the same thing, but it doesn't need to be. I think that's going to be fine. I'm not particularly worried about that, and I hope I'm justified in that. It's really a matter of finding that balance, not having all the pressure on a young quarterback's shoulders who really probably isn't ready at this time to have it. And that rhythm and timing is going to take time to build. Non-negotiable. Catch the rich up. I, I, I see what he's saying, though. I mean, you don't want to just, especially at the start of the year, for example, you don't want to just come in and look at Will Levis and say, okay, youngster, it's all on you. But I do have a problem with the fact that that's apparently okay to do with Anthony Richardson. Just keep him healthy and he's good to go. Will Levis, you don't want to put too much on him, though. I will say this, though. Anthony Richardson does have Jonathan Taylor, who is in some way a proven guy, I guess. I hadn't played a whole lot. Didn't play a whole lot last year. Um, But... I, I guess whatever. I, I I probably agree with more of what he had to say. I don't know if that is what I would have chosen for a non-negotiable for the Titans. But I've seen much worse clips than this. And you know I have because you've been watching. Tighten up, everybody.